Hi guys, my name is Aditya. I work for Browser Stack as lead of systems engineering, and I contribute to Fedora and uh, Atomic and other community related projects. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a very touchy topic, which is which has given me a big burn in my heart. We got uh, breached last year. Uh, the entire details of breached are available online. We have uh, written a white paper and published it. Uh, you can read how it happened and what we did to address it. What I'm going to talk about right now is that what we did once the breach happened, uh, what helped us in you know containing the breach, and basically there are things that all of us know, but we usually don't pay attention in the rush of getting the product out, or probably we never thought that okay this small thing can you know cause that much impact. So I would like to take this 15-20 minutes to probably uh, highlight those points which probably we already know but we never you know, do them, all right? Uh, these are the topics which we will try to cover up. So let's start. Uh, all of you monitor your production websites, right? Websites or whatever your production infrastructure is, all of you do that. Is there anybody who doesn't monitor the production? All right, everybody does that. We all monitor production. Uh, how many of you monitor production from multiple locations? Am I doing something wrong? How many of you, yeah, so how many of you monitor production from multiple locations? Just two, three, five, okay, six, seven, wow, eight, right. So I, I guess there are good at least 100 people or 70, 80 to 100 people sitting here and about 10% of us monitor production from more than one location. That is extremely bad because what happens is that when you monitor your production only from one location and if that monitoring says that production is down, it doesn't really mean that production is down. It just means that that one single site is not able to reach your production. It could be a lot of variables in between, it could be bad network, in between it could be your monitoring node failure, it could be a production node failure. How do you distinguish that what actually failed there, right? That is why you need multi-location monitoring. Please do that, that's the first thing which every production site should have, right? So that was the one thing which actually helped us a lot. As soon as anything goes down, we have monitoring from eight different locations. It's cheap, AWS rocks, use T1 micro. Right? Uh, monitor unlikely situations like table locks. So there are certain certain alerts which you know which might not actually sound in infrastructure ever. But trust me, if they sound, it's a fire drill. Table locks is one such thing because if your table is locked, then something is not right, your production is down. How will it go down? Either it's a code bug, and trust me, code bug is very easy to handle. If it is not a code bug, then again, you are in for a fire drill because that means that somebody is trying to do something to your database which is not very good. So pay extreme attention to such things which can, which are very unlikely, but they are very, very harmful, right? Uh, one thing is, uh, one last thing in monitoring, I would say is monitor IP addresses in the sense that our application servers or web servers which front the entire web sees a lot of traffic. It's not possible to monitor all the IP addresses there. Leave that. But your backend machines, for example, your databases, your caches, your uh, non-production but you know important components which do not see direct consumer traffic, you should monitor them for any anonymous IP addresses. For example, if your database doesn't have a whitelist based uh, access control, then you are in for a very bad time, right? Am I, am I able to convey what I'm trying to say? Okay, right. Wildcards, that this is the next big thing, like uh, all of you have some sort of database in production, right? And in, when databases are in production, uh, we create a user, we create a database, and then we do uh, grant all to 
my best awesome user with my best password, right? How many of you have done that? Fix it. <laughs> fix it, fix it. This is going to be a nightmare because you have given a, uh, you have given a grant all. Is it me? Am I, am I doing this? Some mic is not right. Okay. Okay, uh, is this better? Am I audible? Okay. Right, so we were talking about wildcards. Uh, how many of you have uh, heard of a company known as Cloudbits? Cloudbits was the name? Cloud something. Okay. So uh, just a quick story. What happened to them was that they were under this premise. Uh, grant all to, you know, the user. And, and one fine day they got hacked. The hacker, uh, the good guy that he was, he downloaded all of their data. Um, then, extort then extorted them. They refused to give in. So he deleted their production database, all their instances, all their backups. See how efficient it is. And all that uh, happens because, you know, there, there is some small mistake which you make, which you think that this is very trivial, this is not going to hurt you, but it does. So never use wildcards, especially in your database grants. And for that matter, any wildcard ACL, if you have any sort of wildcard ACL in probably your sudoers or probably uh, any other application whatsoever, remove them. Be very specific about ACL. Um, I, again, this is, this is one of the very big problem which is introduced because of the cloud environment which we live in these days. Uh, machines can come up and go away instantaneously. And because of that, OK. Code spaces, yes, sorry, yep, you're right, code spaces. Yeah, uh, so machines come up and go away uh, very quickly, right? So, so do you actually, how many of you can tell me right now how many machines you have in your production at this point of time? Do you guys have a good enough system to tell that? How many of you have that sort of system which can point out? Okay, okay. But still, like 10 maybe, 10 people here? Yep, so, so I think we, we need to work on this uh, area as well. We need to have better inventory systems. Uh, and we need to remove the involvement of humans here. Uh, this is a machine's job. Probably we should have scripts or probably tool like Inframar which was uh, discussed previously, uh, tools like uh, some sort of auto discovery tools which can actually identify what all machines you have in your infrastructure, are those machines patched, uh, what are the loopholes and all those things. We need to have a record of them. Right, next is your API keys. So when, when people usually start with uh, something like AWS or Google Cloud Engine or something like that, we generate API keys to do a lot of uh, automated work, but usually because we, when we start, again, the rush is on product to push out the product, uh, we create very generic keys. Okay, this is one key, this key will have EC2 access, S3 access, RDS access, Route 53 access, we do that, right? Because we have to get the work done. 
now what happens is that eventually with with time that key goes on to a lot of people somebody wants to work on s3 what does he do you won't give him a new key you will you will him okay take this key this has the permission go ahead very very wrong idea because now you just gave the person key for s3 but he has now access to a, uh, to ec2 rds route 53 with this is extremely bad right what if the laptop which on which you store the keys uh, somebody stole it or just somebody was just you know browsing it and he got the keys there can be a lot of scenarios where you can leak out this very important key so it's always always better to create very specific keys like if if you want an application to see how many files are there you just need s3 list keys you don't need all of the stuff that comes along just remove it uh another thing is uh applications like uh, aws and uh, google google for business these applications are supporting two factor authentication these days please use it it's there for a reason it helps a lot even if your password is stolen there is, you still have a reasonable amount of protection if you are with two two factor authentication so yeah please use it and another thing is that we have been advocating that production and uh, you know production and staging environment should be very similar but exactly how similar do you want them to be because if they are absolutely identical uh, what happens is that the powers that my production should have are also now with staging so effectively something which should be controlled by production could now also be controlled by staging so now if my staging keys are gone probably somebody can misuse them to delete my production instances right so if you have keys which are of same privileges as production and you are distributing them to everybody so that they can do testing on staging then i think you need to revise your strategy probably have another region uh, where you can uh, generate you know region specific keys and just have your staging there don't give your staging keys permission to entire aws so that you know they can play around don't do that all right uh, this is another issue that these days uh, we have cvs coming in right a lot of a lot of uh, bugs are coming in like uh, i think in last one year we had a lot of big vulnerabilities like poodle was there shell shock was there now latest one is venom how many of you heard of venom okay still better number right so what happens in this scenario is that it's very difficult to keep up with the number of cvs the number of vulnerabilities that are coming up right so what i suggest here is have a automated system something like openwas again doesn't cost you much just pick a t1 micro instance install openwas it's an open source project uh they give you a list of cvs against which you can uh you know scan your hardware scan your instances and you can see what kind of vulnerabilities and what kind of cvs are there which can be exploited for your machines so that will help you a lot uh in in catching and fixing the bugs early on right uh open vas is one such tool there are more tools i think uh, if you want to go take a deep dive probably use nicto or something like that that will also help you right backups this was this was one of the mistakes that uh, cloud spaces cloud spaces right cloud spaces did code spaces sorry this was one of the mistakes that code spaces did they took the backups but they stored their backups in ec2 in in uh, aws only so now effectively if i compromise their aws account i have access to their main databases as well as their backups so i can wipe them out easily right what you need to do is have the backup in aws for easy recovery but you should have an offsite backup and by offsite i don't mean in another region i mean with a totally different provider with having totally different uh, you know access keys and everything all so even if you are compromised from aws side your uh, your offsite backups shouldn't be compromised right and yeah encrypted it's a very cheap process doesn't cost any money at all and it's not very bad on io as well uh, look at uh, look at looks uh, linux 
Linux encryption. Uh, it it supports AES encryption, which is very strong, good enough, and uh, and that will help you a lot. Uh, also, I think uh, logging is something which uh, which we miss. I think first point is something which all of us try to do. We try to have all the important logs centrally. Uh, we do that, but we uh, almost always fail on the second point, which is we we while we log our applications, we don't log the actions, right? So if I ask you today that uh, can you tell me how uh, what all instances were booted in your infrastructure in in AWS or Google engine in last week, how many of you would actually be able to tell me? Okay, how how would you tell me that? What kind of logging do you use? Uh, uptime? No, no. Okay, let me put it in better way. Uh, you monitor the uptime. I'm asking that who actually fired the command to boot that uh, instance? Anyone doing any activity on the system? Uh, okay, no, I, I think, okay, my question is, somebody got the key, f booted up an instance, can you tell me what time, what key was used to boot that instance? No, right? Yes. CloudTrail on AWS. We yes, CloudTrail is one of the solution that can uh, do that. Other than CloudTrail, is there anybody else who's doing something else? Or how many of you are actually using CloudTrail? Two. Okay, four. Right. So, so these are the things which you need to do. You need to monitor that who is actually booting up what, booting up when, and how, from where. These are the things which you need to know because they are the ones which will bite you, right? And lastly, uh, and I cannot stress this enough. Uh, when the when the breach happened, uh, we were very blessed to have an amazing team which helped. I mean, we pulled out I think uh, two days straight, and even after that, uh, we you know people came up and uh, you know were ready to help, including some of the ex employees were there. Ki, okay, we can help you. Uh, tell us what to do. What should we do? Having a good uh, good tight integrated tightly integrated team will help you to you know uh, go through bad phases. So, so that's one thing which I think uh, you should build. That's very nice to have. Uh, I think that's about it. Do you guys have any questions or anything? Uh, uh, hi. Yeah. Uh, I think also we should be investing uh, time in uh, figuring out uh, what could go wrong, because when we talk about vulnerabilities, right? Uh, so. Uh, what I think is, uh, like, uh, you know, you should hack your own system and find out where are the loopholes rather than you wait for someone to come and hack you. Agreed. You should do that, but there are only so many things w you can hack which you have designed. It's like testing your own code. You no, almost you, uh, never find any bug. may not be doing it. That can be, uh, you know, a third party or yes, a white hat yes. or something. See, I, I, while I, I agree to that, and that's a good thing to do, but what I'm trying to say here is that there would always be one smart guy who would be slightly better and who would probably be able to hack you even after you have done all that. Uh, one more thing uh, actually uh, is uh, Hadeen tapping. So basically, you know, if someone is pushing a malware or some kind of code where he can get an entry into the system, right? We can div uh, uh, actually uh, design a defense system uh, which may protect uh, to a greater extent. I can't say it to be 100% proof. But at least we can uh, have an effort towards it. Right. So there, there are such systems already out there. Uh, there are IDS, intrusion detection prevention system. Uh, there are there are malware scanners. There are rootkit hunters. They are there. Uh, yes, they help. They help a lot. And we should have them. Uh, it's just that they are not, again, like you said, they are not 100% uh, sound. So yeah, they, they give a good coverage, though.